Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the Macroeconomics 2023 exam. This is question number one from set two. In order to do well on this question, you should be through unit five. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up that total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. So this question starts off with the country of Northland. Northland is currently in a short run equilibrium with a current unemployment rate of 7% and an inflation rate of 1%. Also, the natural rate of unemployment for Northland is 5%. For part A, we have to draw a long run and short run Phillips curve for the country of Northland. We're going to label the short run equilibrium point X and use the numerical values from the question in our graph. We of course have to start off with our axes. We have the unemployment rate on that X axis, the inflation rate on the Y axis, a vertical long run Phillips curve with the 5% natural rate of unemployment below and a downward sloping short run Phillips curve. And if you have that, you got yourself your first point. The second point from this graph comes from placing a point X on the lower end of that short run Phillips curve. And that's because on that lower end of that short run Phillips curve, we have a higher rate of unemployment than the natural rate of 5%. And if you have that point labeled with the proper values, you get your second point. For part B, we are asked if the expected inflation rate is greater than, less than, or equal to 1%. And we have to explain. In order to answer this question, it's helpful to remember that at the intersection between the long run and short run Phillips curve, that's where we find the expected inflation rate. And as we can see on that graph, that intersection is above the current 1% inflation rate. And that's because when the unemployment rate is greater than the natural rate, inflation is generally going to be lower than the expected rate. And so to get this point, simply explain what we just saw greater than because the actual rate of unemployment of 7% is greater than the natural rate of unemployment of 5%. And if you have an answer something like that, using numbers, you get yourself a point. For part C, we're going to assume that the marginal propensity to consume within Northland is 0.9. And we are asked to calculate the maximum change in aggregate demand if the government decreases income taxes by $20 billion. And we have to show our work with our math. In order to answer this question, we have to remember that the tax multiplier is the negative marginal propensity to consume divided by one minus the MPC. That gives us a tax multiplier of negative nine. But if you calculated it as nine instead of negative nine, that's also going to be okay. As long as you understand that an increase in taxes causes a decrease in aggregate demand. And so the maximum change that we see in aggregate demand is going to be the tax change times the tax multiplier. So let's plug in the numbers and do the math. Negative $20 billion, that's the tax decrease, times a negative nine multiplier gives us an increase of $180 billion. So once you've shown all that work, make sure you specify that it's a $180 billion increase. For part C double I, we have to say what would happen if instead of a tax cut, there's actually a spending increase of $20 billion. And again, we have to calculate it, showing our work. So now we are dealing with the spending multiplier and the spending multiplier is one divided by the marginal propensity to consume. In this case, that gives us a spending multiplier of 10. And the maximum change in aggregate demand from that increase in spending is the change in spending times the spending multiplier. Plug in the numbers and do the math once again, and that gives us $20 billion times 10, which is a $200 billion maximum increase in aggregate demand from this increase in government spending. So once again, specify $200 billion increase along with your shown work. For part D, we're going back to the graph we already drew in part A, and we're going to show the new short run equilibrium that would result from the change in government spending. And we're going to label that point Z. Now remember, we just saw a rightward shift of aggregate demand and in the ASAD model, that means we are going to have movement up and to the right on the short run aggregate supply curve. On the Phillips curve model, that's going to be seen as movement up the short run Phillips curve, but to the left instead of the right. So plot in a new point higher up on that short run Phillips curve and label it point Z. And in order to get this point, point Z just needs to be higher up on the short run Phillips curve than point X and anywhere higher will work. For part E, we are asked how an increase in unemployment compensation would affect aggregate demand in the short run. And we have to explain. It's helpful to remember that unemployment compensation is a transfer payment and that transfer payments increase disposable income and therefore consumption is also going to increase. And consumption is an aggregate demand shifter. So you just have to explain that all out, increase because the increase in unemployment compensation would increase disposable income and consumer spending for unemployed workers. For part F, we're asked to assume that no policy action is taken by the government of Northland. And we have to say what will happen to the short run aggregate supply curve in the long run 
and explain. So this is a self-correction question. And self-correction happens when there are shifts of the short run aggregate supply curve in the long run as a result of changes in wages and other input prices. In this case, since we have a recessionary gap, thanks to the unemployment rate being higher than the natural rate, that tells us that the short run aggregate supply curve would increase because wages or other input prices would decrease. And if you have an explanation something like that, you get yourself a point. Now we are also asked what the impact would be on that short run Phillips curve if there was no government action taken. It's helpful to remember that the short run aggregate supply curve and short run Phillips curves are mirrored images of each other. That means left is right and right is left. And since we just saw a rightward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve, that means we're going to have a leftward shift of the short run Phillips curve. And if you state that, you get your next point. Finally, for part FIII, we are asked what would happen to the unemployment rate in the long run. And it's helpful to remember that the short run aggregate supply curve shift to the right that we just saw will cause real GDP to increase. And when real output increases, unemployment decreases. Simply say decrease and you got your last point. And there you have it. Those are the answers to the 2023 macroeconomics question from set two, question number one. If you still need more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up that total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.